Good morning. Welcome back to SAS from Scratch. This is episode 13, the one all about dates, times, and date times, and how they're handled in SAS. And before we get to that, let's look at a couple of definitions first, just to make sure we're on the on the same page. So there's three different ways of referring to dates and times in SAS. You can either have something that represents only a date, something that represents only a time, or you can have something that represents both a date and a time in one variable. And this is referred to generally as a date time. Um, these are all more or less um, set to an, an epoch or epic of the 1st of January 1960 with the exception of the clock time. So if we look at a date, that's going to be the number of days since the 1st of January 1960. If we look at a date time, that's going to be the number of seconds since the 1st of January 1960 at midnight. The clock time, however, is not linked to a specific date, like the date or date time. Uh, that's simply linked to midnight on a normal clock. And if you if you look at this uh, in terms of the 1st of January, uh, if we focus for a moment on, on the SAS dates, for example, if you have an epic of zero, which is the 1st of January 1960, then that means a value of minus 1 gives you the 31st of December 1959, and a value of 1 gives you the 2nd of January 1960. And you can go about as far back, I think, as the 1500 somewhere in SAS. And you can go pretty far forward as well. I can't remember, but it's a couple of uh, thousand years into the, into the future. Um, the only thing to keep in mind here when we're talking about dates times and date times is that everything in the underlying value is simply a number so there's not a date object there's no date type there's only a raw number value one or two or three 5,678, something like that, which has a format applied on top of it to decorate it. Um, I need to move my face again, otherwise this is blocking. Sorry. There we go. Um, so that's it. That's the definitions that we absolutely have to know when we talk about dates, times, and date times in SAS. The way that SAS processes this is very similar to how, for example, Unix time works, with the exception that Unix time is since the 1st of January 1970 and not 1960. Moving on from the definitions. There's a couple of ways to sort of initialize a date and a time in SAS. So there's functions, which we will look at, I believe, in the next episode. But if you do want a quick and dirty way of referring to a date and time, you can simply use a character literal. Um, this would not be my ideal way of going about it. I would much rather, you know, prefer not hard coding these dates and times for something. Um, that's something that you would get either from your source data or you can get it from uh, perhaps a function instead. Uh, we, we'll look at the MDY function and the DHMS functions in the, the next episode. Don't worry about them now. But for the moment, you can use these character literals to initialize your dates, your times, and your date times. And we can look at an example of that, maybe. Uh, I'll pop open SAS Studio here. 
um, we're not going to focus on episode 14 now. That's for uh, the next episode. So if we look at, um, let's make a quick, a quick data set here. And we can say, okay, give me the new year is going to be 01 January 2024. And we can say that's a date. And if we run this, we'll see that we get a new year value of 23376. So that's 23,376 days since the 1st of January 1960. And now if you've seen the, the, the previous episode, you'll know that we can apply a format onto this as well. And we can say forward as date 9, for example. Which gives us a nice human readable date. But so that's what we're already used to. We know that everything is simply a number. We know that we can apply different formats on top of this without changing the underlying value. And based on that epic of zero at the 1st of January 1960, we can go to almost any um, date or date time that we that we need for our calculations. Time works similar. So if we, we wanted to, we could say um, lunchtime is one o'clock. That gives us 46,800 seconds since midnight. And again, this midnight is on any day. It doesn't, it's not linked to a day. It's simply linked to zero, 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 zero on the clock. Um, and we can likewise apply it a, a format to this time as well. So we can say, well, lunchtime, apply the time five format. And that gives us a human readable format again. But note that this is still numeric with a format lunchtime likewise is numeric of a format that underlying number is still there and we can do things with that number um let me see if i can get so let's say new year's lunch will be and we already know it's a date time so it gets the dt suffix and i believe it's as simple as writing I think it was something like this. Let's find out. Otherwise, I'll just go and check the. Otherwise, I'll just go and check the syntax again. And so this is, how many seconds is this? <laughs> There's three, three, three. Was that two billion seconds? I believe so. Um, two billion and a bit seconds from the first of January, nineteen sixty, at midnight until New Year's lunchtime, 01 January 2024. Um, and so this one we can format as, that's a very good question. The format I normally use is, um, I use the ISO one mostly, so let's go with what I know. But we will look at some other formats in a, in a bit as well. Um, And if we run that, we get 2024, January, day one, and one o'clock in the afternoon. So that's a quick and easy way of getting dates and times into your data. Not the best way of, of doing it because you don't want to have to go and hard code all of these dates and times by hand. But that option does exist. Moving back to the slides. Uh, one other thing just to note is that these character literals are not date sense uh, case sensitive. So whether you make this all caps, lower cap, uh, lower case, or a mixture of them doesn't really matter. The important thing to note here is that when we when we have these character literals, you need to just put 
the correct suffix so that SAS understands what it's looking at. Okay, we've already said this, but these dates and times are numbers all the way down. They can be used in numeric calculations. So if you've got one number minus another number, that gives you just a value. And you can figure out how many days are in between something. Um, you can do the same with time. So if you have one clock time minus another clock time, and you know that both of these are seconds since midnight, then the difference between two clock times gives you a number of seconds. The difference between two dates gives you a number of days, and a difference between two date times gives you again a difference in seconds. And it's going to be a large difference, but you can, for example, divide that by 3,600 if you want to get hours or um, 3,600 times 24, calculate that first and then divide by it if you wanted to get the number of days. So you have to just learn to work with the number of uh, days or the number of seconds and then know how to convert that to years or months or weeks as it, as it might be. Um, that's a very raw way of working with it we will see that there are functions to help us with that in episode 14. But for now, you, you can simply subtract one date from another date. SAS does account for leap year days. SAS does not account for leap seconds. If you don't know what a leap second is, it's most likely not applicable to your job. Don't worry about it. Um, and SAS does not make adjustments for daylight savings time. So something is a certain number of seconds or a certain number of days from the 1st of January 1960. How you decide to handle that is up to you. Uh, SAS simply has a, an epic and it works to and from that, that epic. So chapter 13 in the SAS base prep guide uh, provides a couple of handy formats for dates and times. And this is a small, small subset of formats. We have quite a few more than this. These are some of the basic ones that'll get you started on your, on your, on, on, on the, whatever work you need to do or whatever format you need to apply. So if we look, for example, we have date, month, year with a certain width. That's the point of the W there. And we know that the format should end with a dot. We covered all of this in episode 12. So if, if formats are not very familiar to you or it doesn't make sense, go and watch episode 12 um, and that should that should help you understand it better. We also have month, date, year, again with a particular width, 6, 8, or 10. We have year, month, day with a particular width as well. We have date uh, with a width where it can be 7, 9, or 11. We've already seen in our code here, for example, there's a date 9 and here's a time 5. So there's some examples. We have week date and we have word date. You can play around with these. Uh, pause the video, try out all the different formats and widths, but it's it's pretty straightforward. We have for time, uh, a time with a certain width format, which can be 5 or 11. We have date times, which can be 15, 8 or 20. And that'll cover your, obviously your date and your time in a certain format, sometimes including or excluding seconds. So time 5, for example, is hours and minutes and time 11 is hours minutes seconds and i believe even uh, milliseconds the iso 8601 formats um, what i normally use is is 8601da that's for date um, and dt for date times for clock times i would normally just use time five so this is my my personal uh, go to format usually for dates and date times because it reads 
um, a lot easier. You've got year, you've got month, you've got day. They they sort very nicely as well. If at some point you want to convert it to character, if if they're numeric, they obviously just going to sort without issue. But something like this, if it's a character, if you've put that to a character format and it's no longer a numeric format with a, a format simply applied to it, that's not going to sort very well. Whereas your um, your IS8601 date and time will sort without issues, whether it's numeric or character format. So there's a, a couple of examples. The important thing I think is to go and play around with this yourself to try and better understand it. Google for some extra formats that you can use. Uh, there's way more than this out there. And and SAS has a bunch of formats that's that's predefined and predetermined and you don't have to, to worry about creating your own. Um, I think for almost every scenario imaginable where you need to work with a date or a time or a date time, SAS has already done the, the legwork in terms of the formatting. And it goes without saying that if you do want to go from this numeric format to a character representation of it, you simply use the put function with the relevant format that you want. That's it for chapter 13, probably the shortest video I'll ever make. Um, there's not a lot going on in chapter 13, except to try and explain all of these epics and formats and things, the character literals. Um, so this is a nice easy one. Chapter 14, however, is, is fairly large. So it's so large, in fact, that I'm going to split it into multiple episodes. So there's going to be a 14A, a 14B, and a 14C. Uh, and 14A is going to be all about date functions. And we're going to see how we can work with dates in a much better way than handling raw values or simply um, almost trying to, to sort of guess what we need to to do so for example if if somebody tells you well what's the last day next month and perhaps next month is february you would have to go and figure out is it a leap year isn't it a leap year to know if it's going to end on the 28th or the 29th and sas gives us functions to simply put in a result and say okay well from today add a month and give me the last day of that result uh, so that we don't have to do a lot of this raw processing of dates and times. And that's stuff that we'll look at next time in episode 14. So as I've said, short episode. Um, there's not really an exercise to do. There's not really much homework that you can go and do. Your homework would be make some dates and times, play around with the formats, make sure you understand how they work. And if you want to, you can subtract one date from the next, look at the result, subtract one clock time from the next, look at the result, and try and figure some things out with the the raw way of processing. But then we'll go and look at proper SAS functions to, to do things. Excuse me. So that's it for episode 13. Like I said, short and sweet, uh, probably the shortest one ever. So until next time, thank you very much for watching. You're welcome to like and subscribe. If you wish, you can leave a comment to let me know where I can improve. Um, or if you just want to give your opinion on something or you want to weigh in on something, you're very welcome. Anyway, enjoy the rest of your day. Have a good one. Cheers. Bye-bye.